Today we have ticket number, trying to read this upside down, 12343, and it's a faulty Nintendo Switch Lite that doesn't power on. Probably not gonna be able to see this very well, but the pins on the port are absolutely mangled. And I wanna see if this has affected the power management IC M92 T36. If it has, that will need replacing as well as the USB-C charging port. To check this, we go over to our scope. I evaluate by seeing how bad the pins are. Wow, yeah, these pins are, uh, like I said, mashed. In which case, I don't have strong hopes for M92, but I could be wrong, as I've been wrong before. And to check, we'll go on the back of the board. And here we have the BQ chip on the right. This is the charging IC, and this is the power management IC, M92 T36. This is the chip that might go bad. This reading won't be 100% accurate because we need to get the port off. However, I am just gonna check and see if we have any immediate shorts on it. So I've got my meter in continuity mode, black probe on ground and the red probe to measure. Now, if we have a beep this side, which we don't, that's okay. How are these caps? These are the ones that usually go, yeah. Okay, so we have one shorted cap at least, two shorted cap. One side of a cap is meant to be ground in most cases. And this side is not meant to be grounded, but this is shorted to ground here. That's shorted to ground. That one is also shorted to ground. That one isn't. I want to check this one again. No, that one's fine. And the quote unquote CPU cap seems to be okay. So we do have, in fact, a bad M92 T36. I'm just going to go over BQ as well, our charging IC, just to see if we're all good. So same rule applies usually. One side of the cap is ground, which they all seem to be fine here. So BQ seems to be okay. So we've got a good old standard M92 T36 chip swap as well as a port swap. Let's get rid of this charging port first. Here we have in crisp quality under the microscope the charging port we need to remove. I do like to add just a tiny bit of flux behind here and just a little bit on the pins, just to help with the flow of solder. My personal preference, uh, everyone is different. People that I speak to don't really use this much heat or airflow speed, but again, it's worked for me. I use about 470 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of full on 120 on the quick H61DW. I'll just hover the heat gun around, wait for it to wet. And then I just go ahead and pull the port off. But again, it seems to do the trick for me every time. Give it a gentle love tap to see if it's melted, which it is. And just go ahead and put it from the board. No rip pads. Hold it next to the fume extractor so I can suck up all the fumes. And whilst I'm here and the board is hot, I like to come straight back in with the hot air gun and clear out all of the ground holes with my solder sucker. Obviously being very careful as I do it. Just like that. Come in with a cotton bud and some isopropyl alcohol. And just clean up any of the flux that we may have had just here. Just like that, looking gravy. Now with our flux, we come in, just put some flux here. Add some leaded solder to our iron tip and just go over these pins just to make that removal process a little bit easier. Where's my wick? There it is. Come in with our wick here. And just get rid of the solder that's on these pads. Mixing the leaded with the unleaded. Another quick clean whilst we're at it. And there we go. We're going to come back in with some flux on the ground legs, just like that. Sorry to interrupt Joey, master of soldering. There we go. Just add some leaded solder onto there. Perfect. Onto the pins. Nice. And we're going to fill up our ground holes with lots of leaded. On both sides and down here. There we go, nice big bubbles. I'm not gonna add any more flux. The flux we have there is okay. Now we come in with a hot air gun again and we circulate the heat and wait for every single little bit of solder to melt. We have a small bridge on that first row of pins you can see, but that should disappear once it has enough heat. And here we go. Any second now, there we go, lovely. We're just waiting for the solder to fall through the board and you'll see it kind of get sucked up any second. 
There goes the top left one, just about there. I think the top right one is also melted. We're just waiting for the bottom left and right solder balls to melt and go through the board. I can kind of see myself in them. It's quite quite freaky, actually. All right, it should be okay. I'm just going to place that port on. I'm going to push down in a sec. I tinned the port also, just to ensure that we had enough solder on the pins, as you can see. And I'm going to hold the hot air on. And I'm going to push the back of the port down. There we go. And I'm just going to circulate this air until I'm happy that everything is solid. Which should be now. So I'm going to come off. I'm going to keep holding the device. Sorry, the port. Until I see everything solidify. Which is going, going, going. I think the bottom right one, I'm just waiting to solidify. There we go. There we go. Now I'm going to remove. Really quick clean. Just with some ice proper alcohol and a toothbrush. First off though, without that. Just to get any thick flux off. Instead of spreading it around the board. Now some IPA and a toothbrush. Uh, now some IPA and a cotton swab. I might have said toothbrush before. I meant cotton swab. Just to make sure we get everything perfect. There we go. Looking tidy. And now if we zoom in to about here, we're now going to see if these are solid. Just to ensure that we've done a good job. Take our tweezers and give everything a nice little poke. Is that a bridge? No, that's above. So that's fine. That one isn't solid though. That one is. That one is. This, that one's okay. That one's okay. And this one's okay. Okay, so we have one pin that isn't soldered down correctly, which is this one in the middle here. I'm just going to check the ones either side of it. They seem to be fine. It is just this one. So we'll go back over it with our soldering iron. First off, we add a tiny, teeny, wincy bit of flux. I'm going to come in with the much thinner soldering iron here. I believe it was this one. So we're just going to hold down. Try and get a good bond between the pad and the pin. I'll maybe add a tiny bit of solder onto the end of the iron. To see if that will reinforce it a little bit more. Okay, real quick clean just to get rid of any flux that we have down here. I'll give these a test again, just in the middle. Yeah, I think it was that one. But as you can see, all of these are now solid. Good, okay, job done there. I'm just going to quickly melt the flux in this area and give it a clean up. The solder that you see here is solder that has definitely gone through the board because it's been sucked up by the solder holes. I will add some more solder here though and get that little bit of flux off of the port. There we go. Might need to just get the solder out of that hole actually because otherwise, which is just about here, what's going to happen is when I go to put the screw in, it's not going to go in properly. Don't need to get rid of too much here, just enough to uncover the hole. So if I just put my iron in, I should soak up most of that solder with the braid. There we go. Nice. Quickly go over that. Again, tiny bit of flux on each of these areas just to round them off. Give them that little bit of extra security. I don't personally think it's needed. However, it's also not going to do it any harm. Last but not least, this one in the top left here. There we go, looking fine and dandy, that's for sure. Now, realistically, in this scenario, what I should have done is replaced M92T36 whilst the port was off the board. However, I can guarantee that we still have issues with M92T36. Yes, we do. We still have shorts on those caps. So we're going to replace M92T36, get it off the board. The board is already semi-hot, so I'm just going to add a tiny bit of flux. Just to, again, help with the flow of solder and push that flux around the chip rather than everywhere across the board. I'm just going to hold it either side of my tweezers. Come in with the heat. We should just be able to lift it straight off. 
There we go. Now, as long as the flow is good, I don't believe that you need to always replace the solder. So let's grab our other chip, the replacement M9T236. Put this a little bit in better view, shall we? Just like that. Melt that solder again. We'll come in with our chip. It's skew whiff, as you can see. Massively skew whiff. Sort it out. There we go. There we go. And it sat nicely in place. Come off the heat. And then we're going to reinforce the position by pushing down on the center of the chip. Just holding this down so it makes a good secure bond coming off it again. Now this next step isn't really necessary, but I'm gonna I am gonna add a tiny bit more flux and just give it a quick reflow just to see if it moves anymore. But I don't think it's going to. Nah, I think that is absolutely fine. Wait for that to cool off a little bit and then a clean with some ice propyl alcohol and cotton swap. I might have said cotton swap there. Cotton swab again, come in without any ice prep alcohol to start with if the board is hot enough. Dry up as much flux on the cotton swab as possible. Ice prep alcohol and a clean. Quickly check our work so you can see that it's attached that side. You can see that the chip is attached that side and this side, all good. And lastly, this side, all good. The most important thing. Have our shorts gone? So again, multimeter in continuity mode. Do we have a short here? Nope. Do we have a short here? Nope. Short here? Nope. And you can hear. And we don't have a short here. That's good. Fine. There we go. Lovely. That is replaced successfully. Now let's give it a test. Just to confirm this works, we are looking for 15 volts on both sides. So we go ahead and plug it in. What do we get? 15 volts, 30 milliamps. Perfect. You turn it over that side there. There we go, 30 milliamps, perfect. Okay, should be all good. Now all I need to do is just dremel down the port, put it back into the chassis, and that is a working Nintendo Switch Lite. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.